Hey, Gallatin High School, it is Mr. Flood. Mr. Flood. Who's Mr. Flood? Uh, if I do my math correctly, I think only the freshmen don't know me. Well, maybe, maybe none of you know me or remember me. I was in your school in September of 2018. Uh, I know that's like eons ago. That's almost, that's like over a year and a half ago. Maybe the sophomores don't know me too. I don't know. I always get mixed up with school years. And I know uh, 18 months is like 18,000 years in teenage time. But I was at your school. That's coming back to us now, Mr. Flood. Yes, you came to our school. Yes, yes. The juniors and seniors are remembering me. I hope you are. Anyway, but Mrs. Henry uh, reached out to me. I, I don't know if, if some of you know her. Uh, she works in the district. She reached out to me. And obviously, I was at your school, so she reached out to me and asked me if I would send you all an encouraging video uh, because of all this crazy, this crazy, scary, weird, unforeseen, unfortunate, different, uh, what other adjectives can I use, time that we are going through right now. And so that's, you know, my reason for doing this. So I, had, I, I remember Gallatin, I had a great time when I was there. Uh, Mr. Burke and, and the staff and everybody there treated me so well. I've been in Missouri a couple times, have some, uh, a, a very close friend who lives in Fenton. I don't know how far that is from you guys. And I have another friend in Springfield too, I think, uh, another speaker. Uh, so one, thank you again, you know, for the way that you guys treated me when I was there uh, because I felt so welcomed in your school. And just to refresh your memories, because that's what adults do, right? We always remind kids of stuff, uh, but I'm not nagging you, I'm just reminding you. If any of you remember the three challenges that I gave you when I was there, they were three simple things that you can do that have such a profound impact on the lives of others and of yourself also. And these three things, again, if any of you remember these three things, are three things that are so applicable now, more so than ever. The first thing I taught and I talked about when I was there, if any of you remember, was to look on the inside of people because we're all alike on the inside. And if this crisis, this pandemic doesn't absolutely prove that to, you know, 100%, I don't know what could because I'm just like you guys. My family is just like your family, right? Everybody's vulnerable to getting sick. Everybody's vulnerable to, you know, all kinds of illness and, and things because we're all human, right? When it comes right down to it, we might, you know, not look the same, talk the same, act the same, live in the same place, practice the same religion, different color skin, whatever. Uh, but when it comes right down to it, we're all the same on the inside. So what does that mean for us, Mr. Flood? Well, it means it, you should have empathy and compassion for everyone, but certainly you can begin with the people that you're alike, that you, that you know you are, are like, uh, and, and it should give you more empathy and compassion for people. So, And when you practice that empathy and compassion for people who are like you, it becomes simpler and easier to practice it for everyone. So we're all alike on the inside. The second challenge that I gave you was to say thank you to and connect with and, and show respect for two adults in the building. And I will tell you this, guys, I'm hearing more, more and more now. The other day I walked with a high school principal um, who I'm very close with. We, we try and walk a couple of times a week for an hour in the morning. And he, all he could tell me was how he, his kids, his students were doing well. It was his staff that he was really worried about. His teachers were really struggling. Um, with making, and it's been six weeks now, right? But making the transition to teach um, uh, remotely, and, you know, and teach virtually through computers and, and Zoom meetings and conferences and all kinds of stuff like that. And I guarantee that, you know, you know and I know you, t and I don't even know when you guys finish. I'm assuming you, you I, I think Missouri schools, maybe at the end of May, you're done, um, if not sooner. But I know that most teachers, guys and girls, have, you know, not taught virtually before. And they've got all kinds of distractions. You know, they could have a spouse at home. They could have children at home who are younger than you or your age who need to be, who need help navigating, working with their teachers, and you know, in turn. They could have pets at home. Um, not a lot of teachers have a room they can lock themselves in. I mean, I hope, well, I'm sure a lot of them wish they had a room they could lock themselves in to get, get away from people. But where they can get away from the distractions. Where they used to be able to separate home and school, now those two things have combined together. Now... I'm sure they're doing the best they can, but don't you want to be the kid, you know, when you get back to school? I'm assuming you guys aren't going back this year in New York schools. We just got the word over the weekend that, you know, schools are, they're done, you know, for the year. No one's going back. 
Um, but don't you want to be the kid when you get back to school that the teacher looks at you and says, oh my God, thank you for showing up virtually, being on time to class, you know, contributing online when no one else was contributing. Thank you for being on time. Thank you for getting your assignment in on time. Can you have a bad day? Sure. Can you have fun on the computer? Absolutely. But it's even harder now for teachers to keep you engaged. And I had a, a teacher uh, just a couple weeks ago, a teacher wrote to me an email and she said, Mr. Flood, I teach deaf students. I teach hearing impaired kids. And she said, I'm having a really hard time engaging them online, typing to them and signing with them. And I said to her, when do you think was the last time any of your students got a handwritten letter in the mail? And she wrote back to me, oh my God, I never even thought of that. And that would be really easy for me right now because my daughter and I are writing cards out to our relatives. She was like sending out greeting cards to her relatives just to let them, let them know that they're thinking. So I said, why can't you just do that for your students? And I know that's kind of weird for you guys to, to write letters. I don't know if any, any of you have ever written a letter, but you know, it's just be, be engaged, you know, be engaged, you know, engage your teachers and, and engage others, which leads me to my last point. And I know I, you know, the last challenge that I gave you when I was in Gallatin was to, uh, that no one eats alone because I talked about my son, Justin, eating alone in middle school and high school. And I know you can't practice that challenge now, but what you can do is reach out to someone. Think about a kid in your school, because no matter how big or small your school is, there's kids who are isolated. So think about a kid in your school who was isolated before this happened, and think about how even more doubly isolated they are now. Maybe they only have one parent. They have no brothers and sisters. They're just, they live on the outskirts of town. Not that you're going to see anybody, right? Everybody's, I don't know what the social distancing rules in Missouri, it's like a police state here. You can't go, like, anyway, someone got upset at me for being too close to them in the grocery store the other day reach out to someone who you know is isolated, a kid that might have, might be isolating or is, doesn't have a lot of people to talk to. We're losing people. In New York, it's horrendous. So many people have died. So many people are still getting sick. And so we're gonna lose people to this virus. Let's not lose anybody to sadness, loneliness, isolation, and depression. Those things we can work on. And the last two things I wanna say to you uh, one thing be I want to ask you a question before I say something to the seniors is how do you want to come out of this crisis? How do you want to come out of this? You can come out of this worse, the same, or better. What do you mean? How can I come out of this better, Mr. Flood? Well, you have no distractions of any other extracurriculars, extra, extracurricular activities right now to work on. There's no soccer, lacrosse, baseball, uh, softball, field hockey, tennis, dancing, music, theater, whatever you're doing, right? And, and maybe you're still doing those, some of those things online, certainly not sports. And I'm not saying sports are a distraction, but because you are not participating in those things, you have other time to work on self-improvement. Pray, meditate, read, engage with people, make friends, can make stronger, form stronger bonds and connections with people, write letters like I was saying to you guys earlier. So, and you can come out of this better than you were before it started. Not better than anyone else, but a better version of yourself and better than you used to be. You can come out worse, like all screwed, oh my God, like I'm all messed up now because of timing. You can come out the same. Most people are probably come out about the same, but you can get better during this time because think of all the time you have to work on self-improvement. And lastly, I want to say to the seniors, I think this is one of the reasons Mrs. Henry wrote to me. And I know Mr. Burke would say this to you too. I don't want to say the same thing that every other adult is saying to you guys. Like, uh, like oh, you know, people are dying. You should be grateful for what you have. Uh, I don't want to say anything to that, like that. I empathize with you. Losing your graduation, if you guys have lost graduation, prom, is, it, it stinks. It's just, it's a bummer. Um, I, 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 I know when you're 16, 17, 18 years old, it's a big deal. You want to walk across the stage. You want to be recognized. And I don't know what they're doing at Gallatin. If you have a ceremony in July, right now in our school, in our high school, in my town, they're talking about bringing the kids back at Christmas time for some kind of winter formal instead of the prom. So I, I don't know what they'll do at your school. I know that Mr. Burke will do what he feels is the right thing to do that's healthy and safe, obviously, and that he gets feedback from his staff and the administration and the counselors and the parents and the district about what the best thing 
you know, to do for all of you guys. But he, but he cares about you greatly. I, I know that the staff cares about you greatly at, at your high school. But I will say this to you. In your life, guys, there will be births, there'll be deaths, there'll be marriages, there'll be divorces, there'll be jobs, there'll be loss of jobs, there'll be graduation ceremonies and celebrations, and there'll be those things that are missed. Is missing a graduation a big deal? Absolutely. But I hope, I don't hope, I know that as you put some time behind you, and when you look back at this, again, this is part of coming out as, of this as a better person, you will be able to use this in the future, maybe to help your kids. Like you think it was bad what I went through, and this is unprecedented. Like not even people who fought in World War II when there was a war going on, you know, or the Vietnam or or any of that stuff has experienced anything like this. This is so unique. So there's no context, but you can come out of this a better person. I promise you can. I know you can. I had an awesome time when I was in Gallatin. I hope that uh, Mr. Burke will have me back. Again, seniors, I really, really, really am thinking of you. I hope you have some kind of ceremony or something over the summer um, uh, to celebrate your accomplishments and, and loss. You know, I, I, I grieve that loss with you and I empathize that loss with you. So freshmen, if you're watching this, it's Mr. Flood. I hope you know me a little bit better now and I hope I get to meet some of you guys. Uh, at Gallatin in the future. Have a great day. Love you, Missouri. Be well, guys and girls.